The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the to the March 26th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstances that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices that we track trade in the upside, uh, all the sectors with the exception of the utilities and the energy sector. Energy sector completing a TD9 count top yesterday. So that, ex that pullback is anticipated and expected. You've got the uh, Dow up 104, S&P's up 14, NASDAQ 56, the upside, Russell's up 7, Semis are up 7, Trandy's up 41, New York Stock Exchange up 37. You've got gold up 3 bucks now. Uh, silver is down 19 cents. Light three crude is um, it's, uh, down 18 pennies. Natural gas is flat. 30 year treasury pretty much flat. The U.S. dollar index is trading up two pennies as we speak right now. Let's try to figure out what all this means out here. Let's go take a look at those daily equity future contracts. I believe there is some new information for me to report to you, and that's coming from the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 has formed a new daily profile. That new daily profile is below price. Holy shnikes. So that's a bullish sign out there. Even though that's a bullish sign, look, there's still a TD9 count top. You can see another trend line that is formed out there. Um, so what's the deal here? I'd have to go with neutral. Prices trade above the resistance of the top of that daily profile. Uh, that's a bullish condition. We've got the top, so the Russell 2000 is in a neutral position. That is not the case for the ES Mini, the NQ, or the Dow. Both of those, all three of those, have Rhodes Mentum indicator tops. You can see the rising trend line areas where price could fall back to or could find some support out there. So that's what we have going on on the daily time frame. What else do we want to do? Let's go take a look at. Um, Let's go see what's going on under the hood. Let's take a look at some intraday trading out here. And for that, we're going to go ahead and change screens. We'll begin, looks like, with the ES Mini. So we'll do the ES Mini, the NQ. Oh, give me a moment here, if you would. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do this here intraday, and then uh, we'll come back to uh, Garo. So if we take a look at the ES Mini, what we can see here, price is traded daily time frame. Price is traded above the top of its daily profile, 52.57. That would be a support level on a further move lower. Price has run into resistance. That's at that green oscillator and change line, 53.02, basically. If you did see a close above that, that would suggest that price wants to get back to test that uh, Rosemont to indicator top, that bearish shooting star. If we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, I believe when I was on the air with Tom yesterday, we left off with uh, watch the five hour time frame chart because it was forming or completing a TD9 count. And we expected and anticipated a bounce right up into that oscillator and change line, which it did this morning. It did that during the nine o'clock session as price got up to 5,350. That oscillator and change line right now is printed up at 5,300.81. That says 
that we now know to the downside, the key level to watch out here. That's going to be 52.7250. If price closes below that, that tells us we had lower out there. So I'd say the five hour time frame chart is the best one to watch at this moment. Now, if you're looking for the play by play, what's going on on a shorter term time frame, we can see the 30 minute time frame chart took price right back to its breakout level. And that was at 52.8475. So that was a key level of support that held. Now the 30 minute time frame chart has resistance. Two resistance levels, really. One is the offset and change line, currently printed 52.93, but 52.94 is the top of that profile. Price uh, moves up, I expect the offset and change line to get to that area as well. So 52.94 is going to be your resistance on the ES Mini. So that's what I would be watching for. Now let's go over to Garo and uh, from Newport Beach, California. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. How about you, sir? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. Feeling a little old today. My oldest grandchild turns 16 today. So Ooh. kind of a, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. got a new driver on the road. So it's a, it's a great day. Great day. Good celebration day. Thanks for asking. Very good. Very good. Uh, Mr. Steve, uh, I have a question from you regarding VST. Uh, it is an oil company. And uh, I, I've gone long on $60, $60 about uh, a couple of weeks ago on a daily chart when the first dot hit and it, the dot went down around $60. And uh, I got out of it at 68 about three days ago. Um, on a weekly chart, the weekly chart is even better than the daily chart. <clears throat> I don't have no place for any resistance to see that where this is going to stop and uh, somehow this is going to go down and correct itself. I can't find any resistance up there unless if you have something in your charting system, sir. Please guide me. Sure, you bet. So, uh, uh, Garo, excellent read there. Both you and I do not have any kind of a uh, resistance or topping uh, level on a, a daily or a weekly time frame. And you're right. Uh, I would say if, if you had called and asked me, hey, on a weekly or monthly time frame, where's price headed to? I'd have to say it's headed north. Because what happened was on uh, last week, price negated a TD9 count top, which was from two weeks ago. So um, it is it is certainly bullish on the weekly and the monthly time frame. Absolutely. Now, the fact that you got out, I think you said yesterday, um, or within the last couple of days out there, that's really yeah, supported. Yeah. So let me show you, Garo. That's actually supported by what I see on the daily time frame charts. So I'm going to switch over from your charts that I use out there to my white background charts. And what you'll see here is that today is going to uh, form a TD9 count top. Now, that TD9 count top may just result in a pullback to the first level of support. That would be the oscillator and change line, and that's around 68.63. If I open up the daily chart, which I'm going to do so that that's all that we're looking at, we can see how, for the most part, this oscillator and change line has acted as support with the exception of one, one section. One session, maybe two, two sessions will take that back all the way to uh, January of this year, January 25th of this year. So that green oscillator and change line is going to be a key level for you to watch and observe with regard to price behavior, at least from my standpoint. Now, Carl, we're about to go to a breakout here. I'd ask you to hold on if you'd like to, um, and then we can. Uh, I'll, I'll investigate this even further, take a look at it in the intraday, see if there's anything else that I've got out here in my uh, arsenal of tools. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and I'm with Garo in Newport Beach, California. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're taking the charts here for Vistra Corp. BST is a ticker symbol. We're doing this with Garo in California. And uh, so what we identified before we went to that break, Garo, was that on the daily time frame chart, a TD9 count top is going to form today. It will complete that pattern tomorrow. I mean, you could have a higher high tomorrow. That suggests that we should start to get retracements back to support. On a daily time frame, folks, when we get a topping pattern, what I like to see on intraday charts, it doesn't have to be all of them, but on intraday charts, I like to see topping patterns that confirm that. So the first intraday chart that I would use uh, for a, a stock, an indice, uh, would be the 195-minute time frame. That's because there are two 195-minute bars in a trading session. Well, here what we can see is that, uh, Garo, this formed a TD9 count top. It's in the process. It's all formed a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top, too. And right now, price is beginning to trade below uh, the first level of support, which is the oscillator and change line. That's at 70.37. This candle will close at 12.45. If at 12.45 prices below that oscillator and change line, its target to the downside would be 62.12. Not saying that it'll get there, but at least you know for the 195-minute time frame, 62.12 would be its number. Turns out on the 130-minute time frame, there's 330-minute bars. It has also formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price is trading below that oscillator and change line. That tells us green. It tells us it's lost momentum. And so its price targets would be 67.44, 66.24, or 65.64. So we got 62.12 and then those three levels. On a 65-minute time frame, another intraday time period that I would use, 65 divides into a 390-minute a day evenly. So we have all 65-minute bars out there. This has a TD9 count top. Now, this suggests that we should see, because price is trading below its profile, this suggests we should see price get back to 68.22. If we take a look at that daily time frame chart again, it shows the oscillator and change on at 68.64. So we're going with 68.64-ish to 68.22. If price closes below 68.22, then it's going to take out the uh, support level on the 30-minute time frame, and 63.52 would be the next area. So it's kind of the progressions. But what I love, Garo, is your instincts or whatever it was that got you out of that trade yesterday. You're a great trader. You know that? 
<laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not as good as you are. Today I shorted it at seventy one twenty eight. And ah. I'm waiting to, on, on a 30-minute chart. Uh, it gave me the first start up, and I'm waiting to come to the 50-day moving average, which is about 69.25. So I will get out at probably 69.30, 35. So I'm just waiting for that 50-day moving average. But whatever you say is completely makes sense to me. I wrote all the numbers down, but uh, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. I do well, thank you very much. Um, and uh, I'll call you in the next two, three days. That'd be great, girl. And uh, if we if we don't talk till next week, uh, please have a happy holiday. And uh, it's always good to hear your voice. And thanks so much for calling. That was Thank Garo. You, Thank you. You, you bet. Oh, that was Garo in Newport Beach, California out there. We've got a couple other requests that have come in. So let's go ahead and get to uh, those. Let's start on those. The first one is from S&P inside of the Tiger's Den. Give me a moment here. Just get my charts back to uh, kind of a normal spot. There we go. So let's go take a look at CRISPR for S&P. Uh, if you give me a moment, we'll get over to that uh, chart here. CRSP is the ticker symbol. So what do we see when we take a look at these charts here? We can see that price is uh, back testing its TD9 count bottom, which is down at the level. It was a trading day of March 14th. That low is 71.13. If you were to see a close below that level, this is going to suggest a price move lower. 62.46 would be the price target. But this stage here, you've got a consolidation with inside its profile. That would suggest we're trading above yesterday's high. S&P, that's a good signal that we should make a move up towards that resistance zone, 73.95 to 74.85. That's what the daily time frame chart is telling us. The weekly time frame chart is saying that if we do close below that TD9 count bottom, again, that level being 71.13, we're likely to make a move to 62.84. 62.84 is the bottom of the weekly profile. In the case of the monthly time frame chart, it looked like last month was signaling a, a monthly profile change in trend. But you got to have two bars above resistance, and right now we're back inside that profile. That consults just a consolidation between 43.74 and 77.35 or thereabouts. So I would say with regard to CRISPR, expect or anticipate a rally. Most likely it should last at least a couple of days, 73.95 to 74.85 being the price target out there. Hope that helps you out. With regard to CRISPR, S&P also wanted to take a look at ticker symbol BEAM out here. So let's pull up the BEAM charts. And what do we see here? We see that price right now. It, yesterday, it closed below, really, two days ago, it closed below the bottom of its profile. Yesterday, the same. Today, doing the same. It looks to me like BEAM Therapeutics is headed down to the 3068 level. That's its daily TD9 count breakout level. We also have, on a weekly time frame, supported about 3145. So I would say the price target to the downside is between 3068 and 3145 out there. If price were to close below 3068, then the price target level would be 2639. Is there anything else that I've got here? Uh, the answer is nothing else that I see with regard to Beam. So, S&P, I hope that information provided you with it, what you were looking for. And as always, thanks so much for your request. John C. inside the Tiger's Den would like to take a look at Nike. If we take a look at Holy Schnikes out there, it did form a wave number seven bottom. you got to love that when it gapped down back on March 22nd. Such as just watch that low because that is a bottom signal out there. That, that's the only bottom pattern that I see on the daily time frame. Let me just open up this chart just a tad. The question is, has this formed an A to B equals CD to the downside? So let's look at the weekly chart and try to answer that. So the B point out here, the only way to get an A to B equals CD, and I'm going to actually do this on my other charts, is I just want to make sure that on Nike, what I would use as the B and C points out here are going to create at least a 0.382 a retracement of that B to C leg. So I'm just, give me a moment here. I'm just monitoring that on my other charts, just putting it in that panel. And, oh, that didn't work. Nice, nice. Good thing you didn't see me uh, there, folks, because you would say, what the heck is that guy doing? Don't worry. I already said it. So now I'm just, uh, and I know you can't see it, 34%. So that's close enough. So now let's take a look at, well, let's, let, let, me, let me do this here. So the volume on what I'm using for my B point is actually letter B here, part of the Chapman Wave tool. Uh, not not the same, but it is a low from the week of February 9th out there. That low is at 99.05. It retraces a one week retracement up into a high that forms in the following week. That's at 107.43. So now what we also know is price is pulling back into a swing point out here. It's a swing point that has volume of 75 million shares. Last week price closed in it with 
80 million shares. So when you close inside a swing point with volume, odds favor, price will get, you're not seeing it? Yeah, you're seeing it. Price will get down. Price will get down and test that uh, low out there. That low is um, 88.66. Below that low is a breakout level at 86.24. Now, I see also a larger A to B equals CD. Let's switch over to my black background charts and let's go take a look at those patterns out there. Uh, so I can give John the uh, accurate information. So you should see the black background charts. I'm going to open up the weekly chart. Just cuts out a lot of the noise. So here on the weekly time frame, and again, the B point, uh, I think we covered that, 42 million shares, and it was passed with 46 million shares. So it's been passed. Okay, so um, the one-to-one -one price projection gets us back to the lows out here from 2022. So that's where I believe that it is headed to because you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD. 8309 is the price target on that, but I'd have to say it's the lows from October of 2022, and that's down around the 8222 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day, before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, uh, folks. One last thing on the uh, charts here for Nike. Uh, John, we can see that price is trading below all profile levels. And on a monthly time frame, price is trading into its swing point. That swing point takes us back to the period of uh, October of 2022. We were taking a look at that just as we were going into the break. Now, that swing point on a monthly basis did 200 million shares. And right now, today, we have done 198 million. So it looks to me like it's got the volume. That's suggesting and just confirming that, te uh, that Tesla, that Nike, uh, should get down into uh, those lows out there. So I hope that helps you out. And as always, thank you for your request. Snowball inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Paps Blue Ribbon. PBR is a ticker symbol. So let's get uh, back to our white background charts and go see what that is doing. Actually, uh, PBR, I think I've only had one of those in my life. The first one was enough for Stevie out there. But this is a Petrobras. So we take a look at PBR out here. It's got a beautiful Rosemintum indicator bottom. It generated that pattern out here, Snowball, on the trading day of March the 18th. It was that bullish hammer candle that confirmed that pattern. Two days later, you got a new profile that formed. And what price is doing right now, it's consolidated with inside that support and resistance level. That's between 1442 and 1506. Come on, folks, you've got to admit out here. You don't have to admit anything, uh, but you've got to admit, I say that again, that these profiles provide us with extraordinary information. I'm pretty sure I could take all of my tools out there and couldn't figure out why 1506 would be a resistance area. But those profiles, look at that. Price yesterday didn't get up to 1506. No, it didn't. It missed it by how much? It got up to a high of 1505. Really? Come on, give me a break. It's a beautiful thing, and you and I, we use these to our advantage out there. So right now, you've got a bottom with the consolidation with inside of profiles. That's the daily time frame. The monthly time frame says be careful because I'm trading below the uh, uh, profile levels. I'm trading below my oscillator and change line out there. The one little glimmer of hope out here is that we did at least take out last week's high. We got above it. We're back inside that candle. Closing above it would be a better thing, but it's only Tuesday on a short trading week, which, by the way, tomorrow morning, folks, I'm going to need to record the show between 8 and 9. So if you would like to listen in live, we'd love to have you there. I'll try to make that show as pertinent as I can, as always, for 11 to 12. Thursday, we'll be back to the normal program. And of course, Friday, we're off for a good Friday out there. If we take a look at PBR, Petrobras on a monthly time frame, it's got a TD9 count top. And it's trading below that green oscillator and change line right now, Snowball. If it remains below 1513, that suggests a further retracement is likely. So if a further retracement is likely, what you would see would be a close below that road indicator bottom and that's going to be your critical low at $14.21 so you got a bottom on the daily consolidation weekly and monthly say be careful but you're only going to be careful if you get a close below that low from March the 18th so snowball hope that provided you with the information you were looking for let's go on to Jimmy D inside the Tiger's Den Jimmy would like to take like a ticker symbol FL that's in honor of Florida it is a great state and I tell you Florida looks like or FL which is Foot Locker looks like it wants to head higher why well we're trading above profile we're trading above yesterday's high uh, that's a beautiful thing so this suggests we want to move higher the daily time frame but the good news is folks is that when you and I analyze a chart we don't just look at the daily time frame we want to understand what's going on up top well we take a look at that weekly time frame now we know why price stopped where it did it's that oscillator and change on it 2718 what's the high that we've seen today out here the high today 2719 so that's a second tool that you really should learn and understand it works different than any moving average that's out there and you get to see it in play real time out there now if price is able to close above 2718 the next resistance point will be 2811 and 2811 in Foot Locker is the make it or break it level 2811 is where if this is only a counter trend move that is where price would find resistance and what i mean by that you would not see a close above that you can spike above it but you would not get a close above it so the real key level here as to whether or not Foot Locker has made a change in trend is going to be that 2811 area out there that's what i see when I take a, a take a look at Foot Locker, this is going to be day number seven of consecutive moves higher out there. Let's pull that chart out here. And so that's a strong bull market. That's suggesting that there is a change in trend just by being able to pull that off. Nonetheless, let's pay attention to the other technical tools out there. And um, 
And I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for there, Jimmy. Let's do a twofer. Twofer says, let's go take a look at um, BYON. I believe that is Beyond Stevie. I think that's that meat that I would never touch, not with a 10-foot pole. Not that I carry 10-foot poles around when I go to dinner, but mm, you're not getting me to eat that stuff. Now, if we take a look at Beyond out here, what's it doing? Well, it looks bullish to Stevie. Why does it look bullish? Well, because it's going to take out a TD nine-count topping pattern. That TD nine-count top, that that confirmed back here on the trading day of March the 6th. It was the high of the bar following bar number neat. That's overstock, BYON. It still says beyond on my charts out there. So I thought that was beyond uh, meat out there. Sorry about that. Well, I still not going to eat beyond meat. I don't care what ticker somebody put out there. Overstock, a whole different thing. So overstock on a daily time frame is going to go ahead and take out its, it looks like it's going to take out its TD9 count top. It's going to trade above or close above resistance, the top of its daily profile. It right now is trading above its green oscillator and change line. So beyond.com out here is in full out bullish mode on the daily time frame. Now, what you'd really like to see, quite frankly, is you'd really like to see it don't it doesn't do too much out there. Why? You're in bar number eight as we speak right now. If price spikes above, this is over the course of the next two weeks out here. If price spikes above 36.85, uh, well, odds would favor that you have a TD nine count top. So we got to come back to that on a weekly basis. Right now, it's only a caution sign out there. It becomes more of a caution sign if price is able to tick above that high. And that high out there is at 35.42. Now, I don't have anything in my charts here, uh, Jimmy, to suggest that it won't do that. Yeah, so it looks to me like that is a place where it's headed to. The volume on that candle session on the weekly basis back on March 8th was about 5.8 million shares. So far, you've done only a, less than a million shares, but it's early in the week, and it's going to be a shortened trading week. But otherwise, beyond, which I guess is overstock.com, is looking very good out there. So, Jimmy, I hope that helped you out with regard to uh, those two instruments, FL, Foot Locker, and um, overstock.com which uh, we actually have friends that uh, friends of friends that actually started that company. We ran into them at dinner in Palm Beach a few weeks back. In any event out here, uh, let's take a look at the next request, which is for AQST. Did we do that? We didn't do that. So I think we got AQST, but I, uh, where do I have that? Do I have that? We do. So now we take a look at AQST out here. AQST is uh, trading out at uh, 425. This is uh, a uh, therapeutics company out there. So we can see that price is trading below profile levels. It formed a road's momentum indicator at the highs out here. That was back on March the 18th. So this is suggesting lower price. Now, lower price to where? Because it's below daily profiles, my eyes need to go focus on the weekly time frame chart. And on a weekly time frame chart, 393 is the uh, number. So you want to watch that. The price closed below 393, then it opens up a move back to the 263 or 275 level out there. And that's for ticker symbol AQST. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to a, a question coming in from uh, Mr. Z inside the Tigers. And he sent it to me uh, earlier this morning. And the question is, let me get back to it. Is it possible, if not likely, gold price peaked on March the 20th? Uh, that the high is uh, at March 20th is the end of the current rally phase um, and now undergoes a consolidation pattern into the July first time frame out there so let's try to analyze that now i've got charts out here for the for gold and silver this uh, you, the very left hand side is a yearly chart so the very first thing we take a look at a yearly chart just want to make now it's a continuous contract out here but that level that i've got on it is 2183 and when you close above that or you trade above it it's certainly very bullish a signal out there if we take a look at the monthly time frame on a monthly time frame we can see a cluster of highs out here um so it is very possible so that adds the idea you've got td nine count tops a roads meant to indicator top out here on the weekly time frame so again this is the continuous contract that we're looking now let's jump down into the june contract on a weekly time frame so on a weekly basis what do we have out here um you could uh, you could say we have you could draw in a consolidation pattern out there although it'd be, it'd, it'd be kind of tough here's what i would say with regard to the weekly time frame i don't see a topping pattern let me pull this back even further yeah, no matter no matter how I slice it, John, I can't come up. I don't believe I can because if you take a look at the A to B equals C D pattern out here, um, that's the A to B point, and I come back here, and here's the uh, C point. So you can see we haven't even made that. So let's just say. So this would add to John's idea. Oh wait, am I on the wrong chart? I think I am. Okay, so uh, my apology there. Uh, let me let me do this. The reason I put up the U.S. dollar index, so, so I've given you a little bit of, of the question. The question is, is it possible that gold has peaked and we're going to see a pullback in some, type of, in some type of consolidation or some kind of pattern? And my answer to that is it's really possible that that is a outcome. Why? We still know that the U.S. dollar and gold are directionally correlated. If you take a look at it over a three- to five-day period, it's, it's, a, it's indisputable with regard to its data. And as long as that condition remains, then we have to also understand what are what is the U.S. dollar index communicating to us. And right now, if we take a look at that weekly time frame chart, we can see that last week price closed above that little descending trend line. And right now, all price has done is pulled back to test that level. So what is that level? That's a great question. 
Um, we'll call it right around the 103.80 ish area here. But if price, if uh, the U.S. dollar index closes above last week's high on uh, Thursday out there, that's telling us that we should rally further. The rally further, John, would take us into about the 104.93 to 105.95 uh, level. And if the U.S. dollar index is going to move higher, well, that adds to the idea of uh, gold pulling back. Now let's get back to those white background charts that I spoke about that uh, nobody was seeing out there. Sorry about that. But here you can see, uh, here is the weekly time frame chart. And so on the weekly time frame chart, here I'll just move that A to B line right there. So what I'm looking for, is there any kind of a top? I don't see any kind of a topping signal as we speak. So that could add to the idea if the day, so really gets down to is the daily chart going to be the one that controls what activity we see? And for that, the answer could be yes. So here's where, if we take a look at the uh, peak that formed out here just a few days ago, John saying, was that the high? Uh, well, it, it, you still have a TD nine count pattern that is in play out here. So it's possible. Again, we have to take this one step at a time. So what's that next step? We've got the June contract up here. 21.6080 is the next step. If this is any kind of a significant high, that leads to some type of consolidation. If price closes below that for two consecutive sessions, you'd have a profile change in trend on the daily basis. That would open up a move to the 2053 level. That's on the daily time frame. So we just simply have to, is it a top on a daily time frame? Absolutely. I've been tuning that horn for probably about a week and a half, and everybody's probably figuring that Stevie doesn't know what the heck he's drinking out there. It's a green juice, I can tell you that. So, um, so yeah, it's possible. Watch the U.S. dollar index. I think that will help us to understand that um, the answer to that question. Let's get back to the other request as well. Uh, see if I can figure out where we left off. It should be for CLSK. There we go. So let's go take a look at CLSK. Make sure I've changed the screens. I changed screens, but we're not on it. So let's go change to the correct screen. Thank you, Stevie. That would, wow, oh, that's weird. Here we go. Okay, so now we should be back to the uh, screens at, uh, that'll help us understand what's going on with CLSK. And CLSK is, drum roll Johnny, it is uh, Clean Spark Inc. And Clean Spark Inc. on a daily time frame, I do not see any kind of a topping pattern out here. Um, what I see is price trading above profile resistance. I see price trading above screen oscillator and change line. I see price trying to take out a swing point. The swing point was from February 27th. There are 59 million shares. Yesterday, you traded up into it with 48 million shares. So far today, you are in with 17 million shares. So price is trying, if it overtakes that, you've got an A to B equals C to the upside. On a weekly time frame, we're trading above profile and the screen oscillator and change line. I don't see any kind of a top that's in place out here. In fact, a close above 2176 would be a weekly profile change in trend signal. The monthly chart for CLSK is bullish. It says over time, price wants to get back to the 3050 level. That's a TD9 count breakdown resistance level, and that thing, as you can see, has held. So I would say that CLSK peak G uh, continues to move higher. I don't see a, a top with regard to peaks, though. You could get a peak G top that forms over the course of the next couple of days out there. But right now, it's just number six, peak number F. Let's go take a look at XPEV. You're welcome. XPEV, this is for GT. Oh, we got to type that symbol in. XPEV. See what its charts. Now, I recall we've looked at this chart several times. We can't pay attention to the daily gaps because this is a currency issue that we've got out here. I believe this is a China company. The daily time frame still suggests move to 823. The weekly time frame says, well, the only way you're going to get to 823 is to close below the bottom of my bullish structured profile. And that's at 865 out there. Uh, the monthly chart is not really provided us with a ton of information. So if we see a close below that 865, area or i'm sorry eight eight fifty two if you see a close below eight fifty two we're headed to eight twenty three out there the next request comes in from mr bill i'd like to take a look at the new york stock exchange the s p is interested in what those oscillator and change lines look like so let's pull open those charts for mr bill let's get to those indice charts here if we take a look at the uh, you specifically we're looking for the s p 500 so i'll open up the chart here for the s p 500 and here you can see that this uh does not actually have a top. There is no topping signal. It's roads meant to mitigate a signal, but there is no confirming candle out there. Um, where is support? 
Well, support is all the way down to 47, 40, 57 because we're using the cash indices. But, Mr. Bill, you and I would be paying more attention on a daily time frame to the ES Mini looking at its support levels to try to gauge where the S&P might head to. But right now, the Austin Exchange is on up at 52.42. You also want to look at the New York Stock Exchange. In the case of the New York Stock Exchange, what do we have here? We do not have any kind of, well, I probably can find, probably can find a sell the D point pattern. Oops, let me get that. But let me give you your answers first. The Austin and Chain Zone is up at 18,180. Its level of support to the downside would be its breakout area. And that's at 17,603.88. So, Mr. Bill, was that the information that you were looking for for both the New York Stock Exchange and the S&P 500? If so, wonderful. If not, write back to me and I'll try to get that posted into the end for you as we go into the last breakout here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Sorry about that, folks. I had the uh, wrong screen up. I had lights recruited natural gas. This was the set of charts that we were looking at here for... Um, 
uh, for uh, Goldilocks, and you get silver down at the uh, bottom. So you can take a snapshot of uh, that. We can also go take a look at uh, the chart that uh, that we take a look at with regard to gold, silver, and the uh, GDX. Now, I still have the April contracts out here for gold. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't have a completed A to B equals CD to the upside. It does have the TD9 count top that's in place out there. With regard to GDX, GDX had a nice couple of rallies out here. It continues to find resistance up at that TD9 count top. That TD9 count top level is at the um, 30.49 uh, level. A price closes above that. You're off to the races right now. Price is pulled back and it's tested one level of support, the top of its daily profile. The top of the profile for the GDX is at 29.94. If you close below that, we likely see a move to 29.74. And below that, the buy zone. 2872 to 2913 would come into play. There was a request to see how gold is traded in some of the other currencies out here. Let's first actually put up the gold contract. This is the uh, continuous contract that I've got up here. And you can see this has got gold priced in euros and British pounds. We almost made, almost made a new all-time high today in gold priced in British pounds. Didn't get up there, but this is how that is uh, trading. I also track how gold is trading using the GLD in its currencies out here. So if we put up the GLD, as an example, that would be this set of charts. And here you can see that we actually did. The GLD made a new all-time high today in terms of Great British Pounds. It made a new all-time high today in terms of Australian dollars and in terms of euros. That is the GLD that uh, did that, that pulled that off. So I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. Um, how do we end the show here? I'll tell you how we end it. I'm going to record tomorrow's show between 8 and 9. Would love to have you join me for tea and crumpets out there. But if you can't, know that that show will be replayed. Well, we played, it won't be live. It'll be uh, Memorex. And it'll be replayed between 11 and 12. And I'll do everything in my power to uh, make that show pertinent. You know, if you've got some requests out there, you can go ahead and send those to me. Please make sure if you do, though, you're putting radio show questions inside that subject because I get so much junk mail it would be easy for me to overlook your sty do not want to do that folks have a terrific Tuesday I'll look forward to seeing you for the early bird special on Wednesday morning take care be safe up there.